it pains me when you know guys get into altercations or guys having their personal issues and somehow my name gets pulled right into those conversations I'm not a bad person whatever I've done is not even remotely the same there's been a lot of misrepresentation of who Terrell Owens is I'm not that guy that you see on that football field. Let's rewind this thing. Let's start it all over. childhood life you know I was a product of my environment and to describe I guess where I grew up and where I'm from that takes me back to my hometown Alexander City Alabama the great Alexander City Alabama home of the Hall of Fame of Terrell Owens everybody loved the football here if you grew up here as a kid nine times out of ten you're gonna play football he was small Slim, very tiny. I never would imagine him being the height that he is. No girls wanted to talk to me. I mean, my teeth were crooked. I mean, I was skinny, strong. I was probably black as this shirt. Real black. No, I'm not gonna say dark. He was black. <laughs> that summer, and then being out in that summer heat, you gonna get a shade darker over down here. Hey, yeah, little Vic. How you doing, Vic? Didn't have a lot at the time, but people didn't know that. Uh, my mom made miraculous sacrifices, whatever she had to do, whether it was working two jobs sometimes, sometimes working three. Yep, I just did it off the top of my head. My mom was a seamstress. Uh, she pretty much made made all of our clothing. In high school, the popular thing was Swiss watches, guest jeans, and things of that nature. We couldn't afford a pair of guest overalls, so I bought them a pair of overalls, and I took the guest Emily, and I sewed it on there. <laughs> and so I felt cool. I felt like I belonged, and you know, my mom could afford guess overalls, even though she couldn't, but somehow I made it look like it. Well, we over here by Mama Zing house. Hello, y'all. Hey. I'm just getting y'all on TV. <laughs> Here's my little friend. Get out of the road. Get, get, get. <laughs> hey, grandma in the yard. Oh, yeah? <laughs> my grandmother was a she was a strict lady. She assisted my mom in raising, you know, myself and, and my sister. She was a no-nonsense type of person. Um, she said what she meant and she meant what she said. And if she told you to do something and you didn't do it, you don't get hit upside the head or hit in the mouth. There was no talking back. There was none of that. Nobody was coming to our house. We weren't going to anybody's house. No one was coming through the yard. Don't walk through her grass. Um, you know, I remember her pulling a shotgun on somebody for walking through the yard. It was rule with an iron fist, basically. <laughs> you couldn't say nothing if you wanted to say something. That's, that's how strict she was. It was always a quietness, a quietness there once we got there. But we knew she, well, I knew she loved us because she took care of us. We had a roof over our head, clothes on our back, food to eat. It just wasn't a lot of communication. Everybody remember when I was a little kid, like I was always with her, no matter what. You know, she sheltered us to a degree to where it affected me. 
I feel like maybe I was socially awkward, you know, not able to, to be able to mingle and, and socialize with people because we were always by ourselves. My grandmother didn't even want me to play sports because she saw that it was a way of me being out of her eyesight and getting in trouble. And so, you know, my mom stepped in and, and basically just said that, let me play sports, it's okay. My first memories of playing football was in junior high school, seventh, eighth grade. And I was so little, scrawny dude, like the smallest pads were oversized for me. I wasn't even good, I, I was playing on defense. I didn't know anything about offense. I didn't know about playing receiver, no nothing. So when I went to college, man, like I said, it was just, it was just a matter of me just making the most of the opportunities. It, it was the beginning of something that none of us could see as far as you know where where it would lead to but uh, you know that's that's all you need is one you know one look of light and one opportunity and sh I mean he took it and turned it into in the goal I was just given an opportunity and I wanted to take advantage of it and so when I couldn't afford to go home for the summer when I was in college I got the keys to the, to the weight room, um, pretty much had 24 hour access to the weight room, and that's how I got bigger, faster, and stronger. It was one summer he came home and I, I seen how he had, you know, the muscle tone had started coming on and out because he was hitting the weights. But then, you know, he, he asked me, because he knew I liked to run track, asked me what I, you know, what I run with him. I was like, sure, I run. I'm thinking we're going to the track and run. He wants to run all over town. And I was like, okay. He might, he might be on to some here. Terrell Owens, that many people know, is an outstanding wide receiver on the UTC football team. My days here at UTC are just kind of numbered. If the NFL works out, I'm going to be happy. So, you know, I hope it works out for me. Okay, last question. You get the right to script. What are the best things that could happen in football to you over the next, say, two or three months? Um, in football, I would say that I get drafted at least in the second or third round very high. By? Uh, it really doesn't matter. Um, because whoever I play for, I mean, I play hard either way, wherever I play, wherever I go. A lot of people think that I'm cocky and arrogant, but I had a lot of confidence in myself, and a lot of it was a, probably a defense mechanism based on how I grew up. When I got on the football field and I became who I became and that self-confidence that I exuded, that's where it all came from. So now I'm with the Niners. I'm with Steve Young, Jerry Rice, Merton Hanks, all these superstars. Once I started to become uh, into my own and develop my skill set, people started to realize that I wasn't like Jerry. People took offense to me celebrating to where, yeah, it has shaped an image of me that I'm sure a lot of people, they can't get out of their minds. People started calling him T.O., and that's the thing. He, he never deemed himself T.O. They started the whole T.O. He was always Terrell. But when he made it to the NFL, what was everybody calling him? Terrell. So it, it, it started off all wrong anyway and then they made T.O. And nothing's wrong with T.O., but to me, T.O.'s just a damn football player. Terrell is, is off the field. Terrell is the man. T.O. is the, the stigma, the image. Even when I went to Philly, I had a couple of players that pulled me to the side, and they apologized based on their perception of who they thought I was based on what they had seen through the media. I was bringing to the table and to Philadelphia what they wanted and what they expected. The fans were excited that they were getting, you know, something that they hadn't had, you know, in a while. And, 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 and they wanted to get to the Super Bowl, and I tried my damnness to give it to them, even with two screws and a plate in my foot. When I had surgery, I had gone in surgery like the next day. I vowed at the time, if they make it to the Super Bowl, I will be ready. I got labeled selfish by a number of commentators that took away from really 
my character and who I was for playing in that game. If it had been Brett Favre, if it had been a white player of that magnitude, they would have been glorified. They were glorifying Tom Brady because he had stitches in his hand and he was able to throw the football. But I did something far more spectacular and remarkable than having some stitches in a hand. I wanted a quarterback like Donovan with a strong arm and the first year was good. And there were things that were brought to my attention as the season unfolded that I didn't notice. It was people that had been around Donovan for X amount of years and they saw the change because I was getting so much attention. Growing up in the South, we call it Two-Face. You, you show somebody one thing and then, you know, then the next you're showing them something else. So him being a big part of uh, kind of the direction and where that team was, I'm sure he had a lot of say so um, as to whether they wanted to bring me back or not. And I'm probably 95, 100% sure that he probably told him don't bring me back. I have to ask you this question because this came up and I interviewed T.O. right before he did get into the Hall of Fame. Was he a bad teammate? I mean, the book on him was that he was a bad teammate and that they got him out of Dallas in part because of that. You were on that team. I have no idea where the narrative comes from. Mm -hmm. My experience for three years in Dallas with T.O. is that he was a great teammate. He was an example of how you approach the game, not only from a physical standpoint, how you approach it from a mental aspect. So at this point, I played with San Francisco, Philly, now with Dallas. Now I'm sort of like the common denominator of, of all these problems, and so all the fingers are going to be pointed at me. But again, you're not hearing any player say any of this. I was never a problem in Dallas. I was not a problem in Dallas. You haven't heard one teammate say that I was everything that Skip Bayless has said everything that Sean Salisbury has been saying. If I'm that bad of a teammate, then why aren't my teammates saying anything about it? So yeah, all these years, people have perceived me to be a certain way that it's because of who and what they think about me because of the media portrayal. I do realize, yeah, I probably could have handled a lot of situations a bit differently, but that's hindsight, you know, that comes with growth, that come with, comes with maturation. There are times where I feel like I want to give up, um, I don't want to be here. Um, you know, a lot of people are probably afraid to, to discuss or talk about that, but we as human beings, I'm sure we've sat in our car, in our room, or wherever we are, and we probably wish we weren't. I went home yesterday um, after I left the facility and uh, I, I took a couple pain pills and then I had some treatment. I had a physician over treating my hand and uh, I think after that I was just kind of groggy a little bit and I kind of took some extra pills with my supplements. The, the rumor of me taking 35 pills, I think it's absurd. Can you categorically deny that you're depressed? You don't see anything that lets you know that this is where his journey began. People always see 
T.O. They, they know the angry football player. But you know, he's a softy. And a lot of folks don't know that. I wish people would really get to know and understand uh, the Terrell Lawrence that I know and not the T.O. that you've been uh, given and, and force fed and accepted from another viewpoint.